Well, hey everybody, I'm John Rithlin with another countdown. 20 wrestlers that you need to watch out for in 2020. This is going to include wrestlers I've seen on independent wrestling shows and also wrestlers that I think, you know, in either AEW, New Japan, WWE, NWA, wherever, that I feel could be breakout stars. And I'm not saying like, oh, they're going to get like the big push, they're going to win the world title and this kind of stuff. But these are 20 wrestlers in particular that I just think that everybody should keep their eye on. That's really what it comes down to. And there, and I could have done a top 50 because I've been to a lot of indie shows. I watch a lot of wrestling programming. And I want so many wrestlers to succeed. Even the ones I don't particularly like, it would be really unfair of me to say, ah, oh, this person doesn't deserve to earn money and this kind of stuff. So this is going to be a much more positive list. And I would love to hear in the comments what you guys have to say. Obviously, not all my favorites are going to make this list, or otherwise it would be at least a top 30, top 50, and we would be here all goddamn day. Some of these talents you may have heard of. Some of these talents you may not have heard of, and that's why I'm trying to give them the spotlight here and do what I can as a wrestling fan to just say, hey, these are some wrestlers you really should watch out for. So, we're going to start off with number 20, Nyla Rose. Nyla Rose is divisive among a lot of people, and in particular, some idiots. But some people don't uh, think that she has all that much ability. That's fine. I think she has a world of potential, and is a, can be a great monster heel, possibly turn into a monster babyface as time goes on. And I think she's. Uh, I think there's something there. I think she can do very well, and hopefully gets a big push in 2020, because it seemed like they were kind of doing that when they did the whole suspension thing AEW did to close out her uh, run with the company for the rest of the year, you know, just for the last couple weeks. So I think Nyla Rose has something, and I would love to see what she can do going forward into 2020. Number 19 would be Liv Morgan. Now, this is just based solely on the two most recent, you know, vignette things that they've been doing. Where it's giving some weird Emelina vibes if you just look at the surface. If you look at the, you know, look a little bit deeper, there could be something there. And if they let Liv actually run with this, Liv could actually make this work and turn into a bit of a darker character in this kind of stuff. Had to have something just bubbling beneath the surface where she's going to take out a lot of wrestlers and not just be another pretty face. And I would be all for that. And hopefully that's what happens. And I think Liv deserves a push. I was down on Liv Morgan for quite a while. She won me over, you know, in the past year. And I think that she could be poised to do something really big. So we need to watch out for her. Maybe she could have a pretty good run in the Royal Rumble to start off this whole thing if they bring her back by then. And don't stretch this whole thing out like Emelina and then pull the plug on it. And then we all think, well, that was pointless for us to get invested in. But I think Liv can make this work. Number 18, Randy Myers. Ravenous Randy Myers, weirdo hero. He wrestles in uh, Canada and in Washington State. I'm sure he also wrestles in other uh, promotions as well. But I've seen him at a lot of the five Northwest wrestling shows. And I know he wrestles in other promotions I'm una uh, unfortunately unable to see. But great guy. Reminds me a lot of exotic Adrian Street with the way he does his gimmick. Because he can back it up in the ring. But he also throws off his opponents with his antics and with his demeanor. And really nice guy, by the way. If you ever go to a five Northwest wrestling show and you have not met Randy Myers, you are doing yourself a disservice. Really, really nice guy. But he can back it up in the ring. He is a very great talent. And I am going to love to see what he can do at Defy going forward. And hopefully I can go to as many Defy shows as possible because I enjoy going to those. I enjoy going to Without a Cause. And by the way, a little sidebar, please support your local independent wrestling because there are a lot of wrestlers out there. You never know when you're going to see the next big star. That's part of the reason why I wanted to do this list because there are some I have seen that I would have never seen if I hadn't started going to independent wrestling shows in Washington State last year. And it's been a freaking revelation. And it renews your love of wrestling, especially when you see a good indie show. So you see how hard these guys work all, you know, in front of like 500 people or 200 people or, you know, 50 people. I mean, and that's a bit of a cliche. Like, you know, Defy brings in like 450, 500 without a cause, brings in about 200, 250. And the whole point of it is there's passionate crowds and wrestlers that want to work goddamn hard regardless of the crowd size. And Randy is one of those guys. And there's other guys and, you know, women that I'm going to mention here later in this list. So just support your local independent wrestling. But Randy Myers, great talent. I can't wait to see what else he does in 2020 and beyond. And then we get to number 17, Ricky Starks. Saw Ricky Starks at the first ever independent wrestling show that I went to last July. Knew the guy was going to be something. Now he's on NWA competing in the TV title tournament. Great guy. Actually got to talk to him at a recent Without a Cause show um, just before Into the Fire, um, a couple weeks before that. 
Really, really nice guy. Really good talent. Great, great heel, but he's also almost impossible to boo because of how good he is. So he can kind of play that tweener character, but he is really, really goddamn good. Ricky Starks is a tremendous performer. Great charisma, natural charisma. You, you, you need to see more of him once you see what he can do in the ring. You just want to see more of him because he has that draw and gets you to watch him. I hope that Ricky Starks has a uh, you know great 2020 and beyond because he has definitely earned it and has really put in the work. We then get to number 16, Chris Statlander. Um, I may not be the biggest fan of the whole alien gimmick thing, you know, her thinking she's an alien. Um, I think that works on the indies, and, you know, it's good to experiment on the indies. I don't know if it's going to translate to a nationwide or worldwide, you know, television product, but that being said, the performer is very, very good. She has great size. She has great ability. She, You can tell even just for a few years in wrestling, she really knows what the fuck she's doing. And sure, whether the gimmick is for me or not is uh, neither here nor there. She is very, very good in the ring. They've been strapping the rocket to her recently on AEW television, and it'll be interesting to see if she can be champion, beat Riho, and whatever else she can do in 2020. She is very good, has really worked hard, and gimmick side is a great, is a great performer. So I hope that she has a big 2020 because I can definitely see something there and a lot of other people do. She's getting a lot of buzz um, on wrestling Twitter. I don't know about other wrestling social media, but on wrestling Twitter, she's getting a lot of buzz. And that means a lot because it means fans are watching and they're interested in what a performer is doing. Number 15, Sonya Deville. The recent tap out to Carmella aside, which I didn't agree with at all, in about a minute and 30 seconds, I don't understand why WWE doesn't see that Sonya Deville could be a breakout star. Am I saying they should automatically give her the SmackDown Women's Championship at the Royal Rumble? No. I'm not saying that. Build it. They were apparently going to have her and Asuka face off at uh, WrestleMania 35. That didn't happen. That got scrapped, unfortunately. It would have been nice to see them go out there for at least 8 to 10 minutes and be able to tear it up, and then WrestleMania was already way too long. But the whole point of it is Sonya Deville can be somebody, you know, I mean, obviously she can be somebody, but she can be somebody that they could trust to be a solid performer in the ring. She can be a whole lot better than they've been uh, letting her be. And she just is really good. She could be a great spokesperson for LGBTQ women and men, just for the community in general. But the fact she's on Fox, I don't think it's really going to work all that well, because let's be honest, Fox is kind of run by idiots. But Boy, I said it was going to be more positive, and sometimes I'm going off on weird tangents. But I think Sonya, they give her some quality feuds. Have her face Bailey at Mania. I mean, it won't happen. It's building to Bailey and Sasha. But tell me, tell, tell me that Sonya beating Sasha for the championship, like maybe in maybe around Money in the Bank or maybe even a SummerSlam, build it would not be a great thing. And see Sonya finally win the championship, and then her and Mandy can feud over it or something. They really need to do something with Sonya because she is a great, great performer and has deserved a ton better than she's gotten this year, which is basically nothing. And that's very unfortunate because based on in-ring skill alone and potential, they could be doing so much more with her. So now we get to number 14, the American Guns, Santiago and Ethan HD. I'm going to be perfectly honest here. If you have not seen these guys wrestle at all like in any promotion like if you haven't been to a defy show if you haven't seen defy on demand if you haven't seen the american guns perform you're doing yourself a disservice they are a great tag team it's weird that they play heels but they are so popular especially among the defiance and it's hard not, uh, for them not to be they are a great team they're great heels but also the fact they can play you know kind of tweener, you know, almost baby faces because they are that good in the ring. And Ethan HD in particular, you need to follow that guy on Twitter. Uh, find out about his work, but follow him on Twitter. He's a great follow. Santiago is also a really nice guy. Met him in person. The American Guns are very, very good in the ring. So, number 13, Ruby Riot. Once she comes back from injury, which should be by the Royal Rumble, for the love of God, I hope she's he uh, healed up by the Royal Rumble. Let her go 30 minutes in the goddamn Royal Rumble and establish the fact, oh yeah, Ruby Riot is really goddamn good in the ring and deserved a whole lot better than she got when she lost to Ronda Rousey Elimination Chamber in like about a minute and a half. That was bullshit. Sure, they had a better, more competitive match on Raw uh, the next night, but that was pretty fucking stupid. 
they jobbed her out like that. But I mean, you know, I knew she wasn't going to beat Ronda, but still, um, Ruby Riot is somebody they could. I mean, I could throw Sarah Logan in here as well because Sarah Logan is good as well. But <clears throat> and she is great power, great ability, untapped potential. Ruby Riot could be the woman they could push. Cool look, great, uh, great skill has had great skill for years and years and could be somebody that could be a focal point of their women's division, you know, among all their three brands. I'm including NXT UK in with NXT. She could be somebody they could really use pretty well. I hope that they do. So we get to number 12, Toa Hanare from New Japan. If Toa Hanare is not featured in the New Japan Cup and the G1 uh, Climax 30 tournament next year, I'm going to be very disappointed. I'm not saying this guy should be a champion next year. But I do see a lot of great things and a lot of great potential in Toa Hanare. He's got the size. He's put in the work. He's come back from an Achilles tendon injury. Um, he was putting in the work in 2018 and was really put in the work in 2019. You can see how hard he is working and I want to see that pay off and He's gotten some victories, but I want to see him be utilized a little more. New Japan does need to have a bit of a youth movement. I'm not saying push old guys out of the way, but have a bit of a youth movement because they need to establish younger talent, you know, that that have potential. Otherwise, what they're going to do, and I know they got their system with the young lions and all that, and they got a tiered system, and that works. But if they don't kind of start using some youthful guys, you know, some younger guys a little bit sooner... Then later, they're going to realize, shit, some of our stars are aging out. We don't have anybody ready. I think Toa could be fine mid-card, upper mid-card guy. Could he be the world champion? Who the fuck? I mean, right now, no. Who knows? Who knows in a few years? Because they built some people up, shockingly, and made the fans buy into it. And Toa can get people to buy in. So that's my opinion on Toa Hanari. Number 11, Cody Chun. Classic Cody Chun. Um, Chun, uh, sorry if I say his name wrong. I doubt any wrestlers are watching this. By the way, if you guys are, thank you. And, uh, by the way, Merry Christmas Eve. Thank you guys very much. But, um, I really think that there is great potential with Cody. I mean, he is classic Cody Chung. He doesn't do a whole lot of dies. He does a great top rope cutter. He can fucking hit that from out of nowhere. No, he can actually hit that and just hit some great stuff. He is a really skilled guy and puts his body on the line like anyway it doesn't matter if it's in front of 100 people 500 people doesn't matter he has worked really really hard and i met the guy a couple times great guy I actually bought a shirt from him uh figured i was like ah, at least i could do buy a shirt from him he is really really good as well and i'm gonna throw one more in here on this so it's gonna be like 20 ish wrestlers um alex zane if you have not been keeping your eye on alex zane the guy is absolutely insane he was on the first uh without a cause show that i went to last year yeah, which was October 2018, saw him uh, earlier this year before he went over to Japan. Alex Zane is fucking ridiculous. Great talent, super agile, great size, and the fact that he can move like that at that size is absolutely amazing. So keep your eye on him. And we go to number 10, Rebel Kell. Rebel Kell, the six-foot stunner, and that is accurate in both wrestling ability and looks. I'm just going to say that right now. She is a six-foot stunner. She draws you in. She is a great talent. <clears throat> um... Definitely has a background in either gymnastics or dance or something because she moves with such effortlessness in the ring and can hit such great kicks. She is going to only get better. She has been putting in the work, and I I met Rebel Kell a few times. Very, very nice. Very cool woman. Very down to earth. But you can absolutely see the skill that she has to be a big star in the coming years. Is it going to happen right now? No, but you can see the work that she's putting in. And having met her, I can see the stars in her eyes. I can see just how she can project being a star. She is really, really cool. Can be a great, great, um, you know, role model for women. And hopefully gets a chance to be featured even more in the independents and even in some bigger companies as time goes on. Folks, I will be right back after this short break. All right, folks, back after that short break. In case you're wondering why I had to take a break, it's because the producer wants to make an appearance on camera. I. Anyway. Um, yes, by the way, for anybody, just really, really quickly on this Christmas Eve, please make sure to adopt Don't Shop. I'm not saying the pets in anywhere do not deserve love, but there's a lot of really good, good pets that deserve homes. If you want to give a home to a good pet, don't make pets Christmas gifts. I'm not saying that because it's a living thing. You need to realize it's uh, years and years and years of love and of 
inspection and time to put in, but if you realize that you want a pet, no better time than now to bring a pet into your home because it's a really good gift. Um, I'm not going to get too sappy here, but honestly, guys, you know, it's great. It's, it, cat, cats are great, by the way. The movie Cats isn't. I recently reviewed that, by the way. You can check out the movie reviews playlist. But yeah, that, that movie wasn't great, but I still love, I still love, you know, Cats, the pets. But yeah, he made his appearance. He didn't like that. But in all seriousness, Rebel Kel is absolutely tremendous. Please make sure to check out her matches. You can see the potential there. Uh, I am cheating a little bit with some of these because I'm putting teams on one, you know, just in one entrant. Private Party. Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy. They hit that freaking gin and juice, that Hurricanrana into the RKO, into the cutter. That is absolutely amazing. That is a thing of beauty. I don't know how they don't fucking miss any goddamn time. They are great with how they, um, with how they'll hit, with how they'll hit moves. Mark Quinn in particular could be a breakout single star. Now, Isaiah Cassidy is very, very good. He is the one good Cassidy that, um, you know, with the last name of Cassidy that AEW has on their roster. It's a little bit of a cheap shot there. But in all honesty, Mark Quinn can be a breakout star, but they're a great team. They are, and I really, really hope that they're tag team champions before too long. We then get to Darby Allen at number eight. Darby Allen, I saw at, I believe it was the first ever Without a Cause show I went to. He had made appearances there since then. He wrestled um, Shane Swerve Strickland, who I will be mentioning here a little bit later. In a great, great match in Swerve's last Defy appearance in, I believe, March. And what's great about Darby is just, he's small, he is slight, but he moves with such, you know, effortless ease. He he draws you in with his great charisma. He does that great charisma. And if you haven't checked out his interview with Chris Van Vliet, um, he talks about, you know, growing up, uh, his marriage to Priscilla Kelly. Priscilla Kelly also deserves a mention on here as I think she is very good in the ring. Whether I like all the antics she does or not, it may not be for me, but I have seen the performer without those antics. She is very, very good in the ring. But Darby can be a, Darby can be their sting. Now, it might seem like a bit... This is, of course, provided that AEW stays around for a while, but I think Darby could be the guy in AEW. He could. Now, is it going to happen right now? No, it's not going to happen right now. But Darby is the guy. He can be the guy... And is really, really nice, by the way. Really nice guy. But it, great see he wrestles just as hard in front of like five thousand people. And it just and will, you know, be in a crowd of uh in front of five hundred people like at the fight and will wrestle just as hard. The guy loves what he does and is goddamn good at what he does. And really, I mean, I, I, I would go so far as to say I love Darby Allen. I would <clears throat> um he is a great, great talent. And then we go to number seven, MJF. Okay, MJF is much more promo than he is wrestling ability. I'm not saying he's bad in the ring, but he can definitely talk people into the building. He can talk people into getting them to hate him. And that's a rare talent, especially to get, like, you know, some legit heat in this day. Now, it doesn't boil down to basically calling the fans losers and this kind of stuff and kind of variations. Sure, that's what a lot of heels do this day, these days and actually have been doing for the past, like, you know, 20, 30 years and stuff like that. MJF, though, is a great heel. Where there's a great heel in wrestling going currently, that's up for debate. But, you know, I think he's up there. I mean, it's not think he's the best heel in wrestling, but I think he's got certain elements that could make him that. But MJF is absolutely great in the ring um, when he's with the right opponent. Because he can tell a good story. No, rest, you know, he's still young. He's still, like, what, 23? 22, 23? His his promos are what get people to, you know, latch on to him or want to see him get his ass kicked. And that's a great talent to have. That's a great asset to have. He needs to come up with a variation of the crossroads. It doesn't, you know, look so bad. But MJF is very, very good. Also saw him at Defy uh, shows. It all goes back to the indie promotions I saw. When I saw that there were fans, we used to throw streamers into the ring, uh, you know, for certain wrestlers. Whenever MJF was there, we'd throw toilet paper. And it was funny to see him on like a couple Defy shows, and then he was on he was against Matt Cross on an unannounced match at All In, which was great to see. We just saw this guy in front of you know as part of a crowd of like 500 people, and suddenly he's in front of like 10,000 people at the Sears Center in Chicago. Um, at least I believe that's where All In was. But yeah, MJF is great. And now we're going to get to number six, Isaiah Swerve Scott or Shane Swerve Strickland. I love the guy. He's great. He's a great talent. He's agile. He has that charisma. He has that ability to get you to, you know, watch what he does and get him to um, appreciate 
you know, get 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 you to appreciate what he can do in the ring. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there briefly. He is very, very, very good at just being a fucking amazing athlete. And you know, Derb in particular was like somebody that really like that really likes him. And that's you know because he was one of the guys that he really enjoyed on the uh, def- on the Defy circuit, and he was even at a Without a Cause show right before um, he signed with NXT. With Swerve, he can be one of the main guys, at least in NXT, and hopefully they give him a chance to do that. He is definitely somebody to keep your eye on. Now we go to number five, four minutes of heat. Rock God Ricky Gibson and Eddie Freak Nasty Pearl um, met these guys a couple times. Well, I met Gibson. I think I met Eddie once, but it's like I've seen them live a few times. And it's always been a without a cause shows. They are going to be at the Five Northwest show January third. Um, I will unfortunately due to due to at the time just finances. I will be unfortunately unable to go to that. I'm fine with money. Don't worry. I'm not asking you guys to send me money for the love of God. I'm just saying I had to make certain cuts because they can't be at every single indie show. They are going to be wrestling another team. They're going to be making their Defy Northwest in-ring debut and seeing how hard these guys worked in Oregon and, you know, uh, Washington State. I imagine even in Canada and other areas. They are very, very good and really very interactive with the fans on Twitter. Uh, Ricky Gibson, great follow on Twitter, by the way. Um, so is Eddie. Don't get me wrong. But Ray, Ricky Ricky is definitely hilarious on there. And, but they are a great team. They're very much a throwback, like a mix of the Rock and Roll Express and the Fantastics. And I mean that with the utmost compliment. They are very, very good. And I really, really hope that they are poised for big things in 2020. Where they want to stick to the Indies or they get signed by another promotion. I mean, I hope they appear on NWA TV at least a few times. They are very good. A very good team and a very good throwback. Number four, Thunder Rosa. I mean, come on. I had to put Thunder Rosa on here. Obviously, Thunder Rosa is uh, more of a well-known name than some others outside of w- outside of the WWE umbrella than uh, than you know than most of the names mentioned here. Thunder Rosa is you know pretty well known. She's put in a lot of work. She is very very good in the ring. I love Thunder Rosa and I think she is a tremendous performer. I can recognize if some people maybe don't get it. Well, you know what? You need to go watch her matches and you need to apologize because she is tremendous in the ring. Whether she tries her hand in MMA and goes the distance but doesn't win, but you can see the passion she has. The work she has put in since being in Lucha Underground, being Cobra Moon, the work she puts in at Wild Superheroes, you know, as part of that roster, being Serpentine. Thunder Rosa is great. She is great in the ring. And seeing her on NWA TV, NWA programming, being able to see the hard work paying off and everything, her featured in proper spots for her work ethic and for her, you know, strong will to get better. You can ju- you can just see the you can just see the stardom radiating from her. You can feel it, and it's just really really nice to see. So I think twenty twenty is going to be a big year for her. Number three, Hikaru Shida. She could be their breakout star a- in AEW. Nothing against Britt Baker. Hikaru Shida could be like their um, their Oscar. She's not quite as nasty as Oscar, or at least I haven't seen it. But I would have almost put Thunder Rosa number three, but. Some people know Thunder Rosa. Hikaru Shida's getting a bit more of a name, but AEW is kind of trying to feature a whole bunch of women and seeing how you know how things go. And <laughs> Shida has some great potential to be the star in AEW. And I don't understand why she isn't yet, but you know maybe they're building stuff up. So they put the Dark Order in the main event of their last program of 2019. More positive, more positive. Going to be more positive. Shida can be a champion sometime in. 2019, if she, or 2020, that is. Hell, she could be a champion in 2019. She could win a championship in Japan, for all I know. She is going to be the person to keep an eye on. I I love Hikaru Shida. Then we go to number two, Chris Bay. Dashing Chris Bay. If he, and B-E-Y, by the way, in case you're wondering how it's spelled. If he is not signed to a major promotion by this time next year, by even the fall of next year, by even the summer, if he is not signed to, I don't know if he's going to sign with Impact. I mean, I have no idea. I know he's made appearances on Impact. He made appearances on 205 Live. He was everywhere at one point for like a string of like a month. It was amazing. He was on 205 Live. He's on Impact. He was um, wrestling it without a cause. He um, was part of a team called Double Platinum with Wade Thompson. 
Um, and he was somebody you could see the breakout star of him. He also knows exactly where the camera is and will just make sure that he poses properly for the camera. It's, it's great to see. But the guy's charismatic and can back it up in the ring. He had a great match with Hammerstone. Hammerstone's another guy that people should keep an eye on because he is um, just great. He's a freaking wall of muscle. And I mean that positively because he can move that frame around really well and is charismatic. But Chris Bay and Hammerstone had a great match at Without a Cause. It, it's a point of like going back to the indies. Make sure you watch the indies and see these breakout stars. Chris Bay, though, again, if he is not signed to a major wrestling promotion, any wrestling promotion, doesn't even at least have some kind of contract, even MLW. I mean, I know MLW's got some buzz, even though they've had some ups and downs. If he's not signed somewhere, AEW, anywhere, by the time, you know, by this time next year, I will be floored. Unless it's his choice, because he is that goddamn good, and he's only 23, 24? I'm not exactly sure on his age. I know he's like in just about his mid-20s. He is tremendous. Watch a Chris Bay match and you'll see what I mean. But number one, Chef. Why Chef? Why not? I mean, he, he is a former, I believe a former Navy vet. I know he was, I know he was in the military. You can see the hard work he's put in. He's the current Defy champion. I was unfortunately unable, uh, unable to see the title change when he beat Artemis Spencer, who's also somebody that's a great Canadian talent that is that puts in a lot of hard work and somebody that uh, uh, Swerve put over uh, in a six man in a six man match like sometime last year, saying this could be the guy. But Chef is Chef's like one, it's like how Derb um, you know and Derb always loved to talk to Strickland. I always loved to talk to Chef. There's just something about, like, you gravitate to one towards one particular superstar at a show. You see, it's like, this is my guy. This is the guy I'm going to cheer for. I will always cheer for Chef. I, he's, a, he's athletic. He's talented. He's solid in the ring. He's, he's a big, he's a big, um, big just raw bone fuck. He's in shape, but he also looks like he, he could just, you could see him, like, okay, you know, you could see him working out and you could believe it. Or you could see him out somewhere and say, hey, you know, not like he's a regular guy, but like he would be one of the people. But then he gets in that ring and my God, he just gets out there and just destroys everybody. He took chops from Walter last year and no sold a couple, which I'm sure hurt like hell. I mean, I know I would be hurting like hell if that were the case, but Chef is somebody that's great, great in the ring. Check Defy uh, Wrestling's YouTube channel. They should have some free matches on there. Watch any Shaft matches you can, and you'll see what I mean. So, yeah, I told a lot of stories about a lot of independent wrestling stuff, and I hope that you guys enjoyed them, and I hope that you guys check out some of these wrestlers. I would love to know some wrestlers you think, uh, you know, people should watch out for in 2020. Leave them in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. Once again, Merry Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. Any holiday you celebrate, I'll see you soon.